Pesowych Świąt. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I'm sorry. Uh, good evening. Uh, just a moment. We will uh, beginning Vigil Easter liturgy and we have the fire outside. If you wish to stay here close to the door, you will be witness of the blessing of the fire. Please step forward to the door to bless, we'll bless the fire. And please rise. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace of Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Dear sisters, dear brothers, it's most in which our throughout the world come together to watch and pray. In his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope, death, and living with him. Let us pray, who through your bestow upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify. This new fire we pray, and that by this Paschal celebration we may be so heavenly desires, what with minds made pure, we may attain festivities of unending splendor to Christ. Today and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha, Kim. Yes. glory and power through every and age forever. Amen. 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 By his holy and glorious ones, may Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. Amen. May the light 
of the Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. And now, my brothers and sisters, we will go with procession. First, uh, we'll be deacon with purifier. We will be go with deacon who has the Easter candle, and we will be go with RCIA team and priest.
the light of Christ. The light of Christ. Mercy to God. The light of Christ. Exalt, let them exalt, the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound a loud our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad, as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, Arrayed with the lightning of his glory, let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. It is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice, to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, Wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, 
whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. O oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, happy fault that turned so great, so glorious a redeemer. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners. O oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth, and divine to the human. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. Therefore, O Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance, and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets. Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain, has shed his peaceful light on humanity, and lives and reigns forever and ever. Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the Word of God. Let us meditate on how God 
in times past, sa past saved his people and in this last day has sent us his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. Please be seated now, listen first reading and please en en uh, anguish your candles. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. Thus evening came and morning followed the first day. Then God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water <clears throat> from the other. And so it happened. <clears throat> God made the dome, and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came, and morning followed the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gather, gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. <clears throat> and so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth and the basin of the water he called the sun, the sea. God saw how good it was. And then God said, let the, <clears throat> let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day, and the lesser one to govern the night. And he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the fourth day. 
Then God said, let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the waters teem, and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile, multiply, and fill the water of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and morning followed, the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. And God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed, since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing. He rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Foundation, not 
to be robed forever with the ocean as a garment who covered it above the mountains the water stood Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning except that at the end of the ages Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for second reading. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There I shall offer him up. You shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. Early the next morning, Abraham saddled his donkey, took with him his son Isaac and two of his servants as well, and the wood that he had cut for the Holocaust, set out for the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham caught sight of the place from afar. Then he said to his servants, both of you stay here with the donkey, while the boy and I go on over yonder. We will worship and then come back to you. Thereupon, Abraham took the wood for the holocaust and laid it on his son Isaac's shoulders, while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two walked on, Isaac spoke to his father Abraham. Father, Isaac said. Yes, son, he replied. Isaac continued, here are the fire and the wood, but where is the sheep for the holocaust? Son, Abraham answered, God himself will provide the sheep for the Holocaust. Then the two continued going forward. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Next he tied up his son Isaac and put him on top of the wood of the altar. He reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered up it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Abraham named the site Yahweh Yure, hence people now say, on the mountain the Lord will see. Again the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, 
I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did, and not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. O oh God, Supreme Father of the faithful who increase the children of your promise by pouring out the grace of adoption throughout the whole world and who through the Paschal mystery make your servant Abraham father of nations as once you saw, grant, we pray, that your peoples may enter worldly into the grace to which you call them. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated and we listen to the third reading. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. And you, lift up your staff, and with your hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch, just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic, and he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurried them into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped, but the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea 
with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, whose ancient wonders remained admit in splendor even in our day, for what you once bestow on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you write about the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel birthright through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, All you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come, without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. 
Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations, so shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that you not shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and the snow come down, and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, so hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people for only at the promoting of your grace to do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue through Christ our Lord.
us pray. O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that renew in body and mind we may render your undivided service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> Please be seated. Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him, through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done, be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. And with your a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. Very early, when the sun had risen, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, Who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, Do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him, but go and tell his disciples and Peter, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, as he told you the gospel of the Lord. So we are here, 2024, Easter Vigil Mass. I would like to sincerely and personally greet each of you, especially Jacob with his family, who will be receive full, uh, full blessing to be our member of our parish who received today sacrament of confirmation. I would like to greet each of you, especially the some guests who are maybe first time in our church in this evening. And I wish each of you, your dear ones, many graces when on resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm delighted to celebrate 2024 Easter Vigil with you, with Father Gilbert, Dick and Pete, and Dick and Paul. In the Easter Vigil Holy Night Gospel, we hear how Mary Magdalene went to the tomb with Mary, the mother of James, and with Salom, when the sun rise, my dear friends, Mary Magdalene, Mary and Salom went to seek Christ. And for me, it's fascinating how these three women wanted to be with him after after everything that had happened, his passion, his death on the cross, and burial. This woman went to serve him, despite all doubts that people had, and the question people were asking. What draw Mary Magdalene and her friends to the tomb was nothing other than love of Christ and the holy impatience. Her heart, her heart was full of desire for Christ, such that nothing, not even doubt or confusion could hold her back from seeing whatever Jesus lived. 
My brothers and sisters, Mary Magdalene and this another two women, they are example, leaves us with a few very important questions. Do we, like her, go out the dark to serve Christ? Certainly, during this Lent season, your life has been touched by some difficulties, some stress, some doubts, some asenterties. Each of us is human. Each of us must carry a cross. And yet, during these crosses, do we, like Mary Magdalene, have hearts full of holy impatience to discover the living God in our lives? On this great night, I would like to wish all of you, your dear ones, hearts full of longing for Christ. I pray that God will grant you and desire to seek Christ present in your daily lives, even in the darkness of trials and uncertainties. For it is this present that brings us peace, hope, and certainty the new life, resurrection life. You all in my prayers. Happy Easter. Alleluia. So now, my brothers and sisters, after homily, we have celebration of the sacrament of Christian initiation. Dearly beloved, let us humbly invoke upon this fund the grace of God, the Almighty Father, that those who from in are born anew may be membered among the children of adoption in Christ. Lord have mercy. Jesus. 
us. Pray for us. All holy men and women, saints of God, pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, deliver us, we pray. From all evil, Lord, deliver us, we pray. From every sin, Lord, deliver us, we pray. From everlasting death, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your incarnation, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your death and resurrection, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Lord, deliver us, we pray. <clears throat> Make this font holy by your grace for the new birth of your children. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. And please be seated. And now I would like to bless this water, what we have in the fountain of baptism. Please listen carefully this beautiful prayer of blessing of water. O oh God, who by invisible power accomplish a wondrous effect through sacramental signs and who in many ways have prepared water, your creation, to show for the grace of baptism. O oh God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hover over the waters, so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power of sanctifying. O oh God, who by outpouring of the flood foreshadow regeneration, so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come and end to vice and the beginning of virtue. O oh God, who calls the children of Abraham Pass dry shot through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh would prefigure the people of the baptized. O God, whose son baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and as he hung upon the cross, give forth water from his side along with blood. And after his resurrection, commanded his disciples, Go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray upon the face of your church and graciously unseal for the hair the fountain of baptism. May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from the scholar of life of old may be found worthy to rise to life of newborn children throughout water of the Holy Spirit. 
And now Deacon will be put the candle three times to the water. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this found, so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again, live with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. And now we have celebration of full reception into of the full of communion of Jacob. We will he who is seeking full member in our faith, please come forward with your sponsor. Jacob Shuda. Of your own free will, you have asked to be received into the full communion of the Catholic Church. You have made your decision after a careful thought under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I now invite you with your sponsor and in the presence of this community to profess the Catholic faith. In this faith, you will be one with us for the first time at the Eucharistic table of our Lord Jesus. The sign of the Church's unity. I believe and profess all that the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims to be revealed by God. And sponsor, please place a hand on the cut in that uh, shoulder. Jacob, the Lord receives you into Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed the presence of his family. And now we have celebration of the confirmation and I would like to invite Father Gilbert come here. We together give you special blessing. My dear candidate for confirmation, by your baptism, you have been born again in Christ and you have become member of Christ, of his priestly people. Now you are to share the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us. The Spirit sent by the Lord upon the apostles at the Pentecost and given by them the successors of the baptism. They promised strength of the Holy Spirit which you are to receive. will make you more like Christ and help you to be witness of his suffering, death and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active member of the church and build up the body of Christ in his faith and love. Dear friend, baptism of God, our Father, give the new birth to eternal life in his chosen Son. Let us pray to our Father that he will pour out the Holy Spirit, strengthen his Son, which his gift to anoint him to be more like Christ, the Son of God. 
O powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the water of the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and give them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon him to be his helper and guide. Give him the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of right judgment and courage, spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill him with the spirit of wonder and all in your presence. You ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, Deacon Paul holding special oil, chrism oil, what Cardinal Supic blessed last uh, week. And now is the moment of confirmation. Thomas, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Amen. Amen. And please welcome new parish. And now I would like to ask all of you to please rise. And now I would like to also direct congregation to relight their candles because we have renewal of Baptist promises. And Dick and Pete give you lights here.
My brothers and sisters, after each question, please respond, I do. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may walk with her in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we announce one renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God with the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty show? Do you believe in God, the Father, Almighty Creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from death, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water of the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus, our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. And now, please make like this nicely. And with Dickens, we will be sprinkled people with the blessed holy water. And now, my brothers and sisters, after blessing you in the holy water, we have universal prayer. And this night, when we celebrate the risen life of our Savior Jesus Christ, we pray for our church and world that all might share the gift of new life. 
that the church, bathed in Easter glory, may be renewed in its mission of reconciliation and truth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That nations at war, especially Ukraine, Russia, Israel, Hamas, and nations threatened by war, may strive to resolve their differences with diplomacy and nonviolence to assure a just and lasting peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the newly baptized here and throughout the world may see in this celebration not an end to their journey of conversion, but a beginning of life of service and witness on behalf of God's people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those received into the full communion of the church may always rejoice at the table of the Lord and bring that joy to all they meet, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may know the healing power of the risen Christ, especially, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may rejoice in the reward of everlasting life, especially Arthur Utek, father of Jeff, Kate Bartley, wife of Dennis, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the living and deceased members of Our Lady of the Wayside who are being remembered, especially at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers in the parish book of intentions and for the prayers we hold in the quiet of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. O oh God of wonder, listen the prayers of your people. Strengthen us in your Easter faith and bring us one day to the radiant splendor of your kingdom. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, the risen one who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation and all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this night, above all, to laud you yet more graciously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by raising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together than an ending hymn of your glory, as they acclaim. O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the fall, so that they may become for us the bad and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the blood and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be chorus to eternal life and may praise and glorify to you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honors yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this year our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as a way, the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and power and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am no worthy that she didn't my love. 
Blood of Christ. Blood of Christ. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blood of Christ.
Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and your kindness make those you have nourished by this Pascha sacrament, wine in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. On behalf of Father Gilbert and our parish staff, I would like to say thank you so much, our choir to prepare and musician, the beautiful music. Thank you so much. May God bless you. And my special thank for our RCAA team to help with journey of Jacob to be member of our parish and full uh, be in our Eucharist through the receive sacrament of confirmation and sacrament of Eucharist. Jacob and your family, congratulations and thank you sponsor. And yesterday we have the special team who yesterday afternoon work with make this wonderful decoration. Thank you, this wonderful, talented members of this environment community who prepared these flowers for Easter celebration. Thank you so much. May God bless you. And thank you, Dick and Pete, Dick and Paul, and Father Gilbert to be with me. And behalf our Dickens and Father Gilbert, I wish you wonderful, peaceful, Easter. Jesus is resurrected. Joy the Easter. Alleluia. Alleluia. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Wonderfully we thinking and now I give you special last blessing. Please bow your heads. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and his companionship defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. 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 And may he who restore you to eternal life and to resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. And now that the days of the Lord's Passion have drawn to us close, may you have celebrated the gladness of the Paschal Feast. Come with Christ's help and exult in spirit to those feasts they are celebrating to eternal joy. Amen. Amen. But if you have some members of your family, friends, tell them 6 a.m. we have first mass today in the morning. 7.30, 9.30, 11.30. Please invite them, especially 6 a.m. mass of resurrection. The Lord be with you. My Almighty God bless you. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Jesus resurrected. Hallelujah.